How you doing, Glasgow? Here um, this afternoon, joy to um, be here in your midst this afternoon. Bring to you the the good news of the gospel, our glorious God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into the world, sent by His Father into the world to be a Savior to deliver us, to rescue us, even uh, even the people of Glasgow. Today, especially the people of Glasgow, if you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, His written Word, that is, it's offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. A Bible, a whole Bible, New Testament, or this... Um, extract from the Bible, the Gospel of Mark, offered to you quite freely and without any cost or any obligation to you. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word, feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hands. It is the Word of God and believing the Word of God believing the promise of God that is because that's that's exactly what the Bible is it's a promise from God for God so loved the world that he gave gave his only son that whoever believes whoever believes in him in his son that is shall not perish but have everlasting life so I can say to you, Glasgow, whoever you are, whatever you are here this afternoon, I can say to you categorically, without question, that God loves you, that Christ died for your sins, and because the gospel is being proclaimed amongst you here this afternoon, you have the warrant, you have the right, you have the justification to believe on Jesus Christ and receive the promise of God, receive the salvation of God. That's what salvation amounts to, receiving, simply receiving, taking God at his word. Take my son, he says, take my son and I will save you. I will forgive you and I will bring you to myself. The very reason why we've been given the gospel, why God sent his son Jesus Christ into the world, is so that men and women can live and have their being in the presence of God. But we've lost that. We've lost that because of sin. Sin came into the world by one man, the first man, Adam. He brought sin, and on top of sin there comes death. All of this comes to us because of man's sin. But God, right from the very start, God immediately, after the fall of the first man, God issued a promise of salvation that all who would believe in his son Jesus, whom he would send into the world, would be saved from that falling condition. Losing the presence of God, losing the felt presence of God, losing the favor of God, losing all that because of man's sin. And now, well, the Bible tells us because of that sin factor, we are all of us, one after the other, born into this world. We are conceived in sin, says God. And then nine months later, we are born in sin. We have sinful natures, and we live, we live in that sinful condition, alienated from the presence of God, separated from God, because of that sin factor. But God is sending His Son Jesus Christ into the world 
has sent him to deal with the sin, to deal with the sin factor because we can't deal with it ourselves. And because religion doesn't do it. Some people think that being a Christian is just the same as being religious. It's not. It's not. Religion comes to kill and destroy. Jesus says, I came, I came to heal, and I came to give life. I did not come to destroy men's lives. I did not come to kill. I did not come to judge. He said, I came to save. And that's what Jesus does. But a person, Jesus, not a religion. You've got all together, according to the Oxford University Press today, you've got 9,900 different religions in the world today. And not one ounce of salvation in any, other, any of them. Dead religion can't do anything for a dead soul. It's a living Savior that you need. Jesus is his name. He died on a cross. He took, he took the curse of God upon himself. He bore the wrath of God on that cross. He died, he was buried, and, he, and God raised his son from the dead. He's alive. He's alive and alive forevermore. Sin and death and hell are conquered. And through faith in the Son of God, believing in Jesus Christ, men and women are saved, they are forgiven, they are given eternal life, and they are brought back to the presence of God, to live in the presence of God through time and through all eternity. This is the gospel that I bring to you today. Not religion, not religious rules, not religious clothes, but a person, Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, came into the world not to make men religious, not to make them healthy, wealthy, prosperous. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Salvation, salvation is what it's about, Glasgow. Salvation for you, every one of you, whoever you are. The gospel is preached amongst you. You have to want it to believe. Jesus says, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Only believe, says Jesus, but that only is a massive, is a huge only. Only, just believe, that's all. Believe on the Son of God and you get eternal life, you get everlasting life. You get a return to the presence of God. You get the enjoyment of God. You get all the blessings of God that he has for a human being. For the want of believing. For the want of believing. In your heart, that is, it's a heart issue. Believing from the heart that Christ died for your sins and that God raised his son from the dead you shall be saved. The Bible, the Word of God for you here this afternoon. Bible says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Human nature took our nature, our nature. God became a man. The job was too big for a man. The job was too big for a prophet. God himself had to come. God was in Jesus Christ reconciling the world to himself. Reconciling, reconciling Glasgow sinners to himself. God was in Jesus Christ. The one who died on that cross shed divine blood. 
Jesus Christ, God, God revealed in our nature, in the flesh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Where did he come from? He came from heaven. He came from glory. He came from his Father. He did not come on his own power. He did not come on his own authority. He was sent. A man comes to you on his own, has no authority. No authority at all. Jesus Christ came because he was sent of his Father. He was sent to do the will of God. And that he did perfectly, that he did to the uttermost. I come, he says, to do the will of God, and that's what he did. He spoke the will of God. My teaching, he says, that which I tell you, put it into practice, and you'll know. You'll know, do what I tell you to do, says Jesus, and you'll know whether it's from God or not. You do what Jesus tells you. If it doesn't, if it doesn't change you, if you don't get what he promises, then you can take it for granted that it's not of God. But you do what I tell you, says Jesus. You repent of your sin and you believe, you put your trust in me, the Son of God, and it will become evident to you that what I say to you is of God. Put it to the test, Glasgow. Put it to the test, whether it be of God or not. Repent of your sin. Turn from it and turn to and put your trust in Jesus Christ and you will fight. I guarantee, Jesus guarantees it to you. You will receive salvation, the very presence of God. He came. He spoke not his own word. He spoke the word given to him of his Father. Everything that Jesus speaks of in the Bible is from his Father. He came from heaven. He came from God, sent of his Father into the world to speak the word of God. And we have the word of God in the Bible. His word, integrity, honesty, sincerity. You can take him at his word because it is the word of God. He came to do the will of his father. What was his father's will? That he should live a perfect life on earth and that he should go to that cross, that he should suffer and die on that cross and shed his blood in order that sinners, even Glasgow sinners, might be brought back to God, might be forgiven and given eternal life in his name. He came, he loved, he loved, and he died on that cross. He shed his blood. He took the sin of the world and he took, he took the guilt of the world and he took the shame he took the blame, he took the curse of God, and he took the wrath of God. He took it all on himself on that cross. So that the man, the woman, the child who puts their trust, their full-hearted confidence in Jesus, in the Son of God, they get forgiveness, they get cleansing, and they get eternal and everlasting life. Jesus came to do the will of his Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, sent from God to speak the word of God and to do the will of God. But it doesn't finish there. Because he did the will of God, 
and because he spoke the word of God and because he did it perfectly, God, his Father, raised him from the dead. And so he's alive. Alive. He's conquered sin. Sin, my friend, it's wages is death. That's why we all have to die. That's why death is coming to the world. Sin's wages. But Jesus has paid the wages. He took that death himself on the cross, forsaken of his father. Dead and buried, laid in that tomb. And after the third day, God, his father, because his son perfectly obeyed his will, his father raised him from the dead. And so Christ is alive. Sin and death have been conquered. And there's nothing left for you, Glasgow, to do but to believe, to trust in Jesus Christ. And you get the produce. You get the benefit of everything that he lived and died and rose again from the dead for to bring to human beings. You get life eternal, you get life everlasting, trusting, believing in the Son of God. He came in the flesh, came in our nature, that's what he came for. He came for you, Glasgow sinners. On that cross, he was thinking of you. Whatever your sins are, however many they are, However bad they might be, however disgusting you might think they are, he hung on that cross, he was thinking of you, Glasgow sinner. He was thinking of you, and he was there for you, he was dying for you, and he's alive, he's dead, Christ is dead for your sins to take them away and he's alive he's alive to justify you to make you right with god to bring you back to god so that you can live the rest of your days in the presence of god and then for all eternity all eternity in the presence of god but in raising his son from the dead. God has given notice to the world. Please take heed. Listen carefully, will you? In raising his son from the dead, God has given notice to the world. The whole world. Every man, woman, and child. God has given notice to the world that he intends to judge the world in righteousness by the one that he rose again from the dead, even Jesus. So I must tell you today, in that day when God judges men, all men, in that day, if you're not found in Jesus, if you're not found trusting in the Son of God, if you've not been washed in his blood, if you've not been cleansed of your sin, if you have not received by faith the benefits of all that Jesus came to bring to you in that day, I must tell you, you will be dismissed from the presence of God forever and ever for all eternity. And so I tell you, Glasgow, I tell you, or rather God does, now, today, now is the day, says God, now is the time, says God, not, not tonight, because you haven't got tonight, not tomorrow, you haven't got tomorrow, not next week, not next year, not your old age, because you haven't got your old age. Now, now is the time, says God, when you're hearing the message of God, the great
grace of God, the gospel of God, now is the time to get right with God. Now is the time to believe. If you can believe, says Jesus, all things are possible. Even your salvation is possible here today, right now, this afternoon, immediately and directly, salvation comes to the sinner who truly believes in Jesus Christ. Only, only believe, says Jesus. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh from where? From heaven, from glory, from his Father, sent by his Father and given authority to do what he did, to die on the cross, to rise again from the dead. God never gave that authority to anybody else. He did not give that authority to Muhammad. He did not give that authority to the Pope. He did not give that authority to any religious leader. He gave that authority only, only to his son, Jesus Christ. The son of man, Jesus alone has the authority to say to anybody, your sins are forgiven but you come to him and you come to him alone and you come to him in full confidence you come to him in faith confiding in jesus you come to him with your sin he will he will forgive you he'll cleanse you he'll remove the guilt the shame take the blame and he will give you the forgiveness of God, eternal, everlasting life in the presence of God. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. What for? The Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. That's what he came for, to be a Savior. Because that's what we need. That's what the world needs. That's what the world needed then. And that's what the world needs now. Look at the world. Look at the state it's in. Look at Scotland. Look at the city of Glasgow. Look at the evil. Look at the wickedness. Look at the uncleanness. Look at the violence. Look at the chaos, look at the mess that we have made of God's wonderful world. God so loved the world that he gave, he sent his only son into the world to be a savior, to rescue us, to deliver us from the chaos of sin, to save us from a very real and known danger. It's all very well to point the finger at other people. Well, it's those people. It's that person. It's my neighbor. It's the person I work with. It's the government to blame. We're all of us to blame because we've all got sinful natures, sinful hearts, and out of our sinful hearts, day after day throughout the world, comes nothing but sin. And that makes the world to be an evil place, a place of wickedness, a place of violence, a place of destruction, just like it is today. But God sent his only son, sent him into the world, to be the savior of the world, to save a world of sinners. And that gospel, that good news of a savior is declared to you here this afternoon by my colleagues, 
I myself, not bringing our opinion to you, my opinions no more valid than yours, not my opinion, the Word of God, give you a copy, check it out for yourself, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, a Savior! That's what his name, Jesus, means. Savior. And that's what he does. That's his best work. He loves to save. Judgment is his strange work. Jesus loves to save sinners. And Jesus would love to save you this afternoon, Glasgow. And he would save you if you would come to him. If you had put your trust in him, put your confidence in Jesus, not me, not a religion, not a church, not an institution, but a person, Jesus. I, I, he says, am the way, and there's no other way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one gets right with God except through me. No other name under heaven because God sent nobody else. He sent His Son. He sent His Son, Jesus. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. The Father sent His Son to be the Savior. Only one Savior. Only one who can rescue you. Only one who can save you from sin and death and hell. Save you from the curse of God, the wrath of God, the judgment of God. Only one who can do that, the Savior of the world. Jesus, sent by his Father to save. And he loves to save. He's willing to save. More willing to save you than you're willing to come to him. What keeps you? What keeps you, Glasgow? What keeps you from coming to him? Nothing but your hearts of unbelief. That's all. That's the capital of crime. That's the worst sin of them all. Unbelief. Refusal to believe in the name of the Son of God. Because out of that unbelief comes all the other sins. Denial of the existence of God. Denial of the fact of sin. A denial of a salvation that God has provided. All the other sins come out of that unbelieving heart. You get rid of the unbelief. You turn from that. You repent of that unbelief. And you turn to Jesus, the Son of God. And he will save you. Save you. Because he's a savior. And he saves wretched sinners. He saves the worst of them, the best of them. He saves drug addicts. He saves drunkards. He saves the sexually immoral. He saves idolaters. He saves all kinds of sinners. He's not particular. He's not particular. Whatever your sin is, bring it to Jesus. He'll save you from it because he's a savior and he's the only savior. He's the only one that God sent into the world to be a savior. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He came. He came from heaven. He came from God. Sent of his Father to speak, to speak the word of God, to do the will of God, to die on a cross and rise again from the dead, to bring salvation for that purpose. Salvation, and that salvation is offered to you, Glasgow, this afternoon. That salvation is yours, set before you the gift of God. Reach out the hand of faith and take it. Take the Son of God. Take
take Jesus home with you and you will be saved. Don't, don't go home this afternoon without him. Never mind the mockers. Never mind the sneers. Never mind, never mind the blasphemers. In the quiet recesses of your own heart this afternoon here in George Square, call out, call out to Jesus, call upon his name, the recesses of your heart, receive the Son of God, he came to his own, his own people that is, they did not receive him, they rejected him, but to as many as did receive him, to those who believed on him, those who put their confidence in him, he gave them, he gave them the right, the authority to become children of God. Jesus is a wonderful savior. I commend them to you. He saved me. He can save you. He will save you if you trust in him. If you believe in him, he was sent for that reason, for that purpose, for who? For who to be the savior of the world? That's who. To be the savior of the world. To save anybody, everybody and anybody out of this sin sick world who will believe on him. Ah, he's not racist. He's not a nationalist. He's the savior of the world. From Afghanistan to Alaska. From the North Pole to the South Pole. Ah, there's no borders with Jesus. He's the savior of the world. You belong to the world of humanity. Then he came for you. He came for you, Glasgow. Whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever your trouble is, whatever your sins are, Jesus Christ came for you, Glasgow sinners. And he came all, all the way, all the way from heaven down into this sin-cursed earth, into the swamp of human sin untouched by it, undefiled by it, and to die on a cross, to be taken by the hands of wicked, cruel men, nailed to that cross, suffering, bleeding, and dying, laid in a tomb for three days, and God raised him from the dead. So that you, Glasgow, so that you could know God personally and relationally in a saving relationship so that you could know him. Know Jesus. Because to know Jesus is to know eternal life. To know Jesus is to know God. He is God. God was in Jesus reconciling the world to himself. Jesus. Knowing Jesus is the ultimate, the ultimate, I tell you, to know him and the power of his resurrection. Raised, raised from your own tomb of unbelief, dead in your trespasses and sins, no life of God in your soul. Today, today, Glasgow, today, not tomorrow, today, receive the Son of God, receive the Savior of the world, receive the one sent into the world to be your Savior, your own personal Savior, to resurrect you, put life into your soul, the life of God into you, and the love of God into your heart. Love everlasting. 
life eternal, and joy inexpressible. Found in Jesus, but only in Jesus, in no other. Because there is no other Savior of the world. Only Jesus. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He came from God. He came from heaven. And he came to be a Savior. And he came for any sinner, any sinner in this dark and sinful world. That's the only qualification you need to be a member, to be a part of this mankind of the world, and to be a sinner. But you say you're not a sinner, then you call God a liar, and there's not much hope for you. But if you own up, you tell the truth, you acknowledge your sin, you repent of your sin, you turn from it, that is. Turn, 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 says God. Why, why will you die in your sin when you can have life, life eternal? Life eternal for trusting, believing. Love, love unquenchable, love everlasting. Life eternal, joy inexpressible. Where does the joy come from? From knowing that your sins are forgiven, and knowing that you have eternal life, and knowing that you have, you have been returned to the presence of God. That God is with you, and that God loves you, and that God will never, never, ever forsake you again. So today, today Glasgow, Jesus Christ is offered to you. The Savior of the world is offered to you. Will you take him? Will you receive him? Will you believe on his name? Will you receive eternal life? Will you be saved? Delivered, rescued, come to him. He bids you to him. You can come on the authority of his word. Come to me, he says. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And I, I will give you rest, peace with God, and the peace of God. Got that, sir? of God. You got that, sir? Huh? You believe in Jesus? Good for you. How about you, sir? Believe in Jesus? You? Praise the Lord. There's more than three of us here in Glasgow today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Glasgow. Believe and you shall. You will be saved. God's promise to you. And God always keeps his promises. You'd like to have a copy of God's word, his written word. I've got Bibles. I've got New Testaments. I've got this Gospel of Mark. You'd like uh, some counsel, somebody to pray with you. Then I would gladly, gladly uh, seek to help you. You'd like a copy of God's written word. It's offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you whatsoever. You would like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, Glasgow. Bless you, I say, and have mercy, mercy upon your precious, precious, never-dying soul.